Liverpool 3, Sheffield United 1. And yet again, I am talking about Alexis McAllister being a Liverpool standout player in a match reaction. Probably been the best player in the Premier League in 2024. These last six, seven, eight weeks, he's been unbelievable. And today, he wasn't even playing in that more advanced role. He had to drop deeper because of Endo being out. And he produced sort of that Vincent Company moment versus Leicester that won Manchester City the league. A Steven Gerrard moment that you've seen. That was truly special from Alexis McAllister. And that could be a moment, although Cody Gapo scored a minute 3-1, that if Liverpool win the league by one point, that could be the moment you say, you know what, Sheffield United caused us problems. Even though they weren't good, they caused us problems and McAllister produced a moment. And yet again, Liverpool don't make it easy for themselves. Yet again, Klopp subs make the difference. And I have to think, I have to say, Klopp's in-game management is the best in world football. You can you can, you can can say Pep's better at this and this manager's better at this, but in in-game management... You don't get Burton, Jurgen Klopp. Robertson added the width. Harvey Elliott was unbelievable. Curtis Jones was unbelievable. They showed up Gaffer Birch and Sobber's side today. Um, those two were really, really impressive. Klopp uses that five sub rule so well, and, and that's made such a difference for Liverpool. So in today's video, I want to talk about McAllister. I want to talk about a couple other players. I thought Diaz had a good game. Nunes got a goal. Uh, I want to talk about Harvey Elliott and Curtis Jones and how they changed the game and what sort of impressed me today from Liverpool. And I think, you know, ultimately... We're at the point in the season where it's the win. I think I saw Liverpool fans upset. They didn't win six 0 You won the game. You're top of the league. There's eight less games to go. You you don't always beat Sheffield United six 0 And the goal they scored was a crap goal. You just struggled to break them down until Curtis Jones came on and added that control in build up to Harvey Elliott. I was about to say Harvey Barnes. To Harvey Elliott came on and helped break the lines. And then obviously McAllister comes up with some Steven Gerrard moment of magic. And I made I made a video. On McAllister, I never uploaded saying why well, I think he would help Liverpool win the league, but it's like two months out of date now. Uh, but I did make a video last month about how I know a lot McAllister, so maybe I'll do another video on McAllister. But let's talk about McAllister. Not only did McAllister score the goal, he scored the goal that I think everyone dreams of scoring a Vincent Company versus Leicester S kind of goal, if you remember that when Manchester City won the league. And I think right now McAllister's got to be in player of the season talk. I mean, he always scored another great goal, he hit the bar absolute screamer but McAllister can play as a six McAllister can play as an eight McAllister can play as a ten McAllister changes the game he is everywhere and he seems to be able to do it all and for 35 million Liverpool got themselves an absolute bargain there because what I noticed about McAllister and I wrote this down in my notes here is he can drop deep and get the ball he can pick the ball off the centre backs drop deep and recycle the ball and just you know break the lines and, and contribute and build up. And that's not his best role, but he's able to do that. He's been doing that moments this season. He's been, you know, dropping deep, collecting the ball off the centre-backs, building up play where he'll do these quick one-twos with his other midfielders, progress the ball up the pitch, play it, or he can spray those long diagonal passes, or he can go on a little dribble, pass a move. Very good understanding of the game, very good in build-up, but he is wasted there. I think today, if Endo had played and he was in a number 10 role, that or number 8 role, that's where he's best. I think he's wasted deeper, but he... But I feel like I can't say he's wasted deeper because he's still so good deeper. Not only that does he rotate the ball, recycle the ball, but he wins it back. He's defensively very good, actually. I think that was the big question about Mark about playing six. Can he do it defensively? The amount of times he wins the ball back. But what makes McAllister stand out for me? and What makes him a special player? I do want to talk about Kurt Jones and Harvey Elliott because I do think they changed the game. I think Robertson added some much needed width. But what makes McAllister special? And, and, and this is what makes him a stand up player. And this is why Man United fans are raving about Kobe Maynard at the moment. It's not just because he's a good 18 year old. It's because they have something uniqueness, which is their press resistance. The pure press resistance of McAllister. When he gets the ball, he could have like six defenders around him, six of the opposite around him, and he could still find a way to play out that scenario. He gets the ball in these tightest angles and, you know, off the ball, Sheffield United were pretty poor on the ball. They did nothing. I think Liverpool broke the record for the most possession in a single Premier League game today since, you know, date, date was driven. But off the ball, Sheffield United made it difficult. Liverpool have struggled against those low blocks and Sheffield United, you know, sometimes pressed McAllister a bit. But he, every time he got the ball, you just knew he wasn't going to give it away. And I think what maybe Liverpool struggled with a little bit was controlling the ball and keeping the ball. They were keeping the ball well and they had the most possession, but it was really that final phase of build-up where Curtis Jones comes on with his great ball retention and Harvey Elliott's ability to run and make space really helped break that up. But with McAllister, because he's so press resistant, because he keeps the ball and he can break those lines, that was what made him brilliant. And where McAllister stood out this season has been further up for me. The fact that he can get the ball when he can ping those balls over the top to Salah. He can completely spit the final line of defence. He can operate between the opposition's midfield and attacking lines and completely spit out of the play. 
that's what stood out to me about McAllister this season. But the fact that he's come in and he can play as a six, he can play as an eight. He's everywhere, just athletically. He's he's a beast. He's a monster. He's that South American warrior. What a signing he has been. But I could be talking about McAllister for a while, uh, but I want to get the statistic up. And I realise I don't want to get statistics up in my match reaction, and I haven't. I'm also watching like the last few minutes of Manchester United, Chelsea here. Gone that show. If we concede... It's been a great game. But McAllister has now basically scored or assisted a goal in eight of his last nine matches. He's on fire. He's absolutely on fire. He's been ridiculously good lately, Alexis McAllister. But I want to talk about someone else that's been ridiculously good. And I think, and this might be an unpopular opinion, so let me know if you agree, Harvey Elliott. I think Harvey Elliott, in, this, in the turn of 2024, sub aside first three months, three months of the season was unbelievable. But in the turn of 2024... I think Harvey Elliott's been better than Sobersly. He's better and better than Gravenberch, obviously. And I think Kurt Jones has been better than Gravenberch. And I think Gravenberch is a great player. He's 21. He can become a good player. He's just been disappointing. But I think Harvey Elliott has been better than Sobersly these last three months. I do. I do. Maybe that's an unpopular opinion. I thought he was brilliant today. I thought Curtis Jones and him really made the difference in that midfield today. And I will talk about Curtis Jones, but let's talk about Harvey Elliott. 21 today, 21st birthday. He changed the game because of his constant movement. Again, how many times have I said in match reactions, probably there's probably been four or five match reactions where I've said Harvey Elliott's come off the bench and he's been really good in terms of breaking down that low block. If, if I'm looking away, it's because I'm watching the last few minutes of the Man United game. How many times has Harvey Elliott come off the bench and he's almost helped break down that low block because of his constant movement, asking for those the ball, the one twos down the right. Absolutely immense. Every time he comes on, he brings on this energy. It's the pure energy, the pure movement that he brings means that Sheffield United defenders get drawn out and then space gets created for Liverpool to break them down. And that makes it e easier for Liverpool. But his energy, his work rate, his running is such an asset. What I've noticed about modern young players is if you look at how much work they put in, and Harvey Elliott is one of the hardest working players off the ball, but he's so intelligent. I think Harvey Elliott's IQ as a footballer is really underrated because his movement to draw out defenders, his ability to pick out the right positions to receive the ball and move the ball and really help break down Sheffield United made a difference. And I think that's multiple times this season where I think Harvey Elliott's come off the bench. And I think this season has been the season where Harvey Elliott and Curtis Jones have impressed me. And we're going to get into Curtis Jones because I think Harvey Elliott and Curtis Jones, some people are saying, I'm not quite sure. I think Harvey Elliott, he's so young, but I think any criticism of last season was just weird. Um, but I think he's just a raw player. And I think some, some Liverpool fans that I know, not many, but they weren't always 100% sure about Harvey Elliott Curtis Jones. They said, I just, they don't quite rate them is what they said. But I think this season has been the season where Curtis Jones, before his injury, and he came on today, was brilliant. It's really shown his quality. I think he should be called up for Southgate. I put Curtis Jones three months ago ahead of Gallagher in my England lineup because he can retain the ball well. But I thought Curtis Jones showed what he can do and Harvey Elliott can see what he what he can do. And I think people are starting to wake up and realise Harvey Elliott is special, but I think people are starting to wake up and realise, you know what, Curtis Jones is much more important for Liverpool than maybe people would have thought at the beginning of the season. So I want to break down Curtis Jones. I've spoken about Curtis Jones about three months ago and why he really impressed me, and then he's obviously been out for a little bit. But he came on today like he was in those sort of, uh, like he was two months ago before his injury, and he looked like he'd never been away. He picked up where he left off, and he was really good before he left off with injury. He picked up, and he's back at the right time. Liverpool have got what eight matches now, eight finals to the end of the season. Curtis Jones is back for that. But what again impresses me about Curtis Jones is he doesn't lose the ball uh, in those tight spaces. He's really good at playing the ball, making those passes out in those tight spaces, and he presses. He presses so hard. His off the ball work is pressing that him and Elliot brought really put that extra pressure on Sheffield United, tied them out and really started to create some more gaps. But with Curtis Jones, he never loses the ball. Whenever I talk about Curtis Jones, I say the word ball retention because he's statistically the best player in Europe for ball retention as of a couple of months ago. I don't know if that's changed, but he's statistically the best player in football at retaining the ball, keeping the ball. Like he does not lose the ball. And what, you, what I noticed about Curtis Jones is he kind of gives me a little bit of a wine Alden vibe, but, you know, a little bit different player. But he, he sort of really helped Liverpool control the game, play the ball. He's very, very secure in build up. He's very, very good at keeping the ball. As I said, uh, he's very press resistant. He's very technically good and intelligent. And I think right now you can argue that him and Elliot could start with Sobersly. And I thought Sobersly was basically well class the first three months of the season. But Sobersly's legs just look gone, whereas... Curtis Jones and Elliot, they seem to have a bit more energy. Now, I do notice that Sobosly made some really good runs in behind them and does cause problems. Um, and I, I don't think he had a bad game, but I think that Curtis Jones really brought something that maybe Liverpool have been missing. His ball retention, 
a, his ability to help uh, control games. I think Diddy's a very, very good player, Curtis Jones. He's better than I rate. Again, I said I think he's better than Conor Gallagher. And if I was Southgate, I'd I'd pick Jones and Mayno over Gallagher because Jones and Mayno can retain the ball. Gallagher is a workhorse, but Bellingham and Rice are workhorses already. England have enough workhorses. They need someone that's good on the ball. That's what you've got Mayno. That's why you've got Curtis Jones. And Southgate might look at that and think, well, Harvey Elliott's a difficult one because there's Cole Palmer, there's Madison, there's Foden, there's Saka. But I think Harvey Elliott, you know, with the quality he has, should have been called up to England by now. The fact that he's played so many minutes for Liverpool at 21 is ridiculous. But Curtis Jones is in a position where England are weak. You look at England's midfield, Rice, Bellingham, there's that third spot. Harvey Elliott could do that, but that's not his predominant role. For me, it's Mayno and it's Curtis Jones. They're the two I pick because... They've got good ability on the ball to control the ball. Um, I did have a couple of other statistics I was meant to share, and I just started waffling. I, I, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I got a little bit distracted this live stream because I'm just seeing out the final minutes of Manchester United versus Chelsea. There was a, I tell you what, it's been an entertaining game. But as you can see here, Liverpool had 83% possession tonight uh, in the match against Sheffield United. Um, so absolute domination. Yes, Liverpool made it hard for themselves, as they always do. Liverpool have this thing where they go 1-0 down and they make it 1-1 and what's meant to be an easy game. Liverpool always make things hard for them, but their mentality to always win, their mentality to not give up when Arsenal City fans are, you know, watching that game I saw online. Yeah, I'm a bit gassed up and I see a few Liverpool fans in doubt. I, I, I'm I, not a Liverpool fan. I, I know, like, I, when you go 1-1 or when you go 1-0 down, I'm not in doubt that Liverpool... And Liverpool, and I'm not a Liverpool fan, I know Liverpool are going to win because there's been so many times this season where it's been 1-1 or they've been 1-0 down and they win. I don't get why Liverpool's own fans panic so much. I guess because you're in a tie race and it means so much to you guys and it means nothing to me. But I see the panic of Liverpool fans when they go 1-0 down or 1-1 and the uproar of City and Arsenal fans. And I think, wait to full time because... Every time Liverpool win this, they find a way to win with their subs and they, they don't make it easy for themselves. They don't storm these games 6-0 like I'm sure you guys want to watch you storm these games 6-0. But you, the mentality of the Liverpool players to respond to injury setbacks, all the setbacks you've had this season and just at that times you've been behind and respond is unbelievable. And I have to say Diaz had a good game as well. He's been looking a lot better lately. His work rate, uh, I think he got the assist. He created a few chances. He's always run at people. And then there's got his goal. Um, I, but the most impressive players for me, I thought I thought Kelleher was quite good as well. Oh my God, don't tell me. Ooh, sorry. I'm in the final minutes of the Man United game here, but I want to get this video out so I can record my Man United match reaction for my main channel. But I thought Diaz was good. Um, I think Keller has looked good as lately as well, actually. He's really stepped up for McAllister. And yeah, that is my match reaction. Liverpool make it difficult, but they've got that moment, that moment that's going to get them over the line, that McAllister moment that reminds me of Vincent Company for Manchester City. I think that I think they'll probably be in the league, which is worst scenario, but it is what it is.